Hello everyone, Sapphire here. Today I will be going over the complete Darius guide. I decided to make a video about this because there are some Darius guides that are lackluster and do not come from a Darius main themselves. So I hope this will help you out. I put timestamps in the description so feel free to skip to certain parts of the video. And with that out of the way, let's get into the guide. Darius is a powerful juggernaut who can carry your team to victory. He does a ton of damage and is pretty tanky as well. Darius excels in the early to mid game, small skirmishes, and split pushing. However, the weaknesses of Darius is how immobile he is and how much he falls off in the late game. Now he has a pretty simple kit. His passive is called Hemorrhage. His basic attacks and damaging abilities apply stacks of hemorrhage up to a cap of 5. When you apply a stack of hemorrhage to your opponent, they will bleed taking damage over time for each stack. Essentially, the more stacks you apply on your opponent, the more damage they will take. Also, when you apply 5 stacks of hemorrhage or kill an enemy with your ultimate, you will gain Noxian Might. Noxian Might gives you increased bonus attack damage until your stacks wear off, which is 5 seconds. Darius's Q, Decimate, is an AoE attack in which Darius will swing his axe in a circle. Enemies at the edge take more damage, apply a stack of hemorrhage, and will heal Darius based on his missing health. If enemies are hit by the inside of his Q, they will take less damage and Darius will not heal or apply a stack of hemorrhage. Darius' W, Crippling Strike, is an auto attack reset in which Darius will basic attack but it will do more damage and slow its target by 90% for 1 second. If Crippling Strike kills a target, it will refund its mana cost and lower the cooldown by half the amount which makes this perfect for CSing. Darius' E, Apprehend, as a passive and an active. Its passive gives innate armor penetration. Its active is a gap closer in which Darius pulls in all enemies in front of him and slowing them by 40% for one second. Darius's R, Noxine Guillotine. When activated, Darius leaps to target enemy champion, dealing true damage. Noxine Guillotine deals more damage the more hemorrhage stacks an opponent has, maxing out at five. Additionally, if you kill an enemy with Noxian Guillotine, its cooldown is refreshed so you can use it again. Okay, so next up I'll be going over the Darius combos, and these are the most common ones that I do. First one is Auto W. So just Auto W. Because your W is an auto attack reset, which means here's just the auto attack animation. So you go Auto, Auto, see how slow that is, right? So you go Auto W. Much quicker. Okay. And then the second most common is Auto W Q. So you can cancel the W animation with your Q. So Auto W Q. Right? Auto W Q. And it's really, really fast. And that's to get three stacks on them in an instant. Next really common one, at least that I used, this is to get five stacks, right? So if I'm going to die or something, and I just need to get five stacks in my alt off, you start with a pool, auto WQ, auto R. Alright, so they're, they're in my E range, so I just... Pull them, auto WQ, auto R. That's to get five stacks off real quick. However, you are missing that um, extra 20% damage on your ultimate because they only have four stacks when you ult them. So in rea like if you, if you wanted to get that, you could just add in another auto attack so you go. Auto W, auto, auto R. And it does a ton more. Okay, next one is EQ. So when you pull them, they are airborne. See how it says airborne right there? 
So that means they can't use their dashing abilities, they can't use flash. So since your Q will heal you, th this is great. They just E Q while they're airborne. And you can do this with multiple people, so you just pull Q. So I'll use this one when I run away from people, like if I'm in lane and there's a gank. Right, you know, like Graves is coming through river. You just pull them, Q and you run and you heal off that. Other than that, it's not used too often. You basically use it just to get like a huge healing. Okay. Next one is ER. So this one is for specific champs, like if you're going against Fiora who has Repost, right? So she can W your ultimate, right? So like if you ult, she can W, does no damage. So to avoid that, Right, let's say like you get your stacks off, right? And you just pull alt. Okay. Not there. You just stacker, you pull alt. Just like that. Pull alt. And she can't react because they're they're airborne from your E. This is also good, like if you're against people that have dashes who are gonna flash away, right? You just pull alt. So I use that one a lot against Fiora. As long as she has her repost up, otherwise I don't use it. Okay. Next one is Flash Q. Right, your Q. Right. Got a little charge up animation. So you want to hit that person right there. Boom. Flash Q. Right, so sometimes in the beginning of the game, right? I'll get them stacked up to like five stacks, right? And they're like one Q away from death, but I'm far away. Flash Q. Sometimes there's multiple, like other times to use this combo, right? Let's say this is the tank. This is like a Nautilus, right? I get my five stacks. I see the back line down here. Boom, just flash on them. Right? So you just bypass this, you stack them, and then boom, flash back away. Alright, and then this one, the last combo that I use, this is the flash W. So I, I, I get my W ready. Right? W ready. Flash. So W flash is just, you click on the target, and then you flash. W, click on them, flash. All right. This is good because it applies a 90%, like your W applies 90% slow, right? So sometimes if you're going to flash Q, they see you charge up this animation, right? And they expect a flash. So they, sometimes you flash and they flash. And so you both you both waste flashes, you don't get a kill, right? However, with flash W, boom, it's instant. Now if they flash, they're slowed so you can catch up to them after the flash. Right? And to combo that, so you just boom, flash, and then you can pull them. After they flash. The runes you usually take on Darius are Conqueror, Triumph. Alacrity or Tenacity, depending on whether the enemy has a lot of CC. If they have a lot of CC, go with Tenacity. Otherwise, Alacrity for the attack speed. Then you want to go for Last Stand. The reason you do not go for Coupe de Gras is because if the enemy is already low health, they are going to die from your ultimate ability. On top of the fact that Coupe de Gras does not increase true damage, Last Stand has good synergy with your Q, because the lower health you are on Darius, the more your Q will heal you, as it is based on missing health. So you will deal more damage to people when you are low health because of Last Stand. For the last two runes, it is very dependent. Personally, I go down the Resolve Tree and pick up Demolish and Bone Plating, 
or second wind, depending on if my laner has an aggressive champion or a poke heavy champ. However, most Darius players go down the sorcery tree and pick up Nimbus Cloak and Celerity. Nimbus Cloak gives you insane movement speed after casting a summoner spell, and with Celerity movement speed bonuses are 7% more effective on you, and you gain 1% movement speed. Then you want to pick up Attack Speed, Adaptive Force for damage of course, and Armor or Magic Resist depending on if your laner is AD or AP. Sometimes I'll go HP if I do not know if my lane opponent will be AP or AD. Next up, we got summoner spells. I typically go for Flash Ghost on Darius. However, sometimes I will go Teleport instead of Ghost. If and only if I need to help the team by making cross map plays. However, if you do go down the sorcery tree, you need to take Ghost every time, so Nimbus Cloak and Celerity will complement Ghost. Next up we have items. Now personally, I build Triforce if I go even or get ahead in lane. If I'm behind, I will go Black Cleaver, as it is about 800 gold cheaper than Triforce. Also, if the enemy team is squishy, I will most likely always buy Triforce. If the enemy team is tanky, I will mostly buy Black Cleaver. Black Cleaver gives more health and damage than Triforce, but you will be missing out on the attack speed and movement speed from Triforce, as well as the Sheen proc. The second item you want to build is Sterax Gauge. This item is insanely powerful as it gives you health and bonus attack damage. The passive gives a shield when you take burst damage and gives tenacity which helps Darius stay alive in fights and get off his five stacks which then he can knock in guillotine people. Now the third item is going to sound super controversial to many of you but I've started to build this more recently and I've had plenty of success with it and it is gargoyle stone plate. This item is sleeper OP because it gives resistances of both armor and magic resist. But most importantly, the reason you purchase this item is for the active. When you activate this item, you increase your health by 40%. But if there are three or more enemies in the area, you increase your health by 100% for 4 seconds. This means you double your current health if there are three or more enemies near you. When you activate Gargoyle Stone Plate, it will reduce the damage you deal by 60% for 4 seconds. So essentially, you gain double health, but you decrease the damage you deal during that duration. So you might be wondering, well how come it's OP on Darius? Well it allows you to become a pseudo tank where you can frontline, pop your gargoyle stone plate, get off your 5 stacks, and by the time it finishes, you can flash on the back line, and then just go crazy ham and ult everyone. So basically it allows you to survive enough to get off your 5 stacks and then target who you want to, which is really really good. Now, I would only build this item if you are planning on team fighting. If you plan on split pushing, I recommend something like a GA, or uh, maybe some defense item. After Gargoyle Stone Plate, I've been having success going Death's Dance. This item is, I think it's insane, because it provides both armor and magic resist, some life steal, but most importantly, its passive is what makes it strong. So, if an enemy champ is going to deal 200 damage to you, you'll take 200 damage Instead of taking it instantly, you take it over a set amount of time as true damage. So it allows you to survive burst champs, which in the late game is huge for Darius. So sometimes what would have killed me, I can survive because I get a two-man Q where it heals a lot of my health back, and then I start taking that bleed damage over time again. So really great. I like it personally, 
But if you'd rather have something more defensive, you can always go into like a Dead Man's Plate, Randuin's Omen if they have Critical Strike, Spirit Visage, or Adaptive Helm for MR. Both of those items are really good. And really, it's just up to you on what to build next. So essentially, you want to build your core item, which will be Black Cleaver Triforce. Then you want to build Sderex Gauge if there are no threats to you. Then Gargoyle Stone Plate if you are team fighting. If not, possibly look into a GA. The last two items you want are defensive. And these are my recommendations. Try them out, see if they work for you. Next up, we have how to lane with Darius. Since Darius is extremely strong in the beginning of the game, you want to utilize that to your advantage. There are different playstyles that you can choose from during laning phase. Some people will shove waves under turret so they can get lane priority and get vision in the enemy jungle. They will also look at setting up dives with their jungler and focus on getting tower plates. Now this is a really aggressive playstyle that can work as long as you track the enemy jungler and have a favorable matchup in the top lane. Other players will focus on wave manipulation and denying their opponent minions by setting up freezes. Then they wait for their opponent to make a mistake, such as being a little too far up in lane and stepping into Darius's pool range. Once that happens, they just run him down lane with Ghost. This is a more passive playstyle for Darius, where patience is a must. Some players do not have this patience, and they just will keep shoving in waves. So if you are a patient person, I recommend going and trying this out. If you are an aggressive person, feel free to shove the wave in, try to get tower plates. But always realize that minion manipulation is huge on Darius, and Darius will teach you that. Knowing when to stack up a big minion wave, when to hard shove and back, you will learn this stuff on Darius and pick it up very quickly. Now both the aggressive and defensive playstyle have their advantages and disadvantages, and knowing when to be aggressive in lane and when to play defensively is a skill that will come in time. However, there are matchups where you are at a disadvantage, so you will be forced to play defensively. Usually against rain champions like Quinn and Vayne will take control over the lane as they can poke you out of lane and possibly even get a kill on you if you're not careful. So in these matchups you want to focus on CSing with your abilities. And next we have what to do after laning phase. Once a tower has been taken, laning phase is officially over. You might be wondering, what do I do once laning phase is over? And well it depends. Mainly you want to be pushing side waves and grouping for objectives such as Dragon or Rift Herald. Make sure it is safe to get vision in the jungle, so you can be safe to push out side waves. If you are stronger than your laner, you want to be split pushing and threatening to take towers and enemy jungle camps. You can probably 1v2 and possibly 1v3 at this point. However, you want to make sure your teammates are pushing waves as well, and you are aware of the enemies on the map at all times. If there are no enemies on the map, then it's probably safe to assume that they are headed towards you, and in that case you want to back off and wait till they show before pushing waves and towers again. So what happens if you went even with your lane opponent? Well in this case, you still want to push waves and group with your team, whether it is to get vision in the river or for objectives for when they spawn. Since you went even in lane, you can probably 1v1 them but avoid 1v2s because if you make a mistake, they can capitalize on that. So you can still threaten to take towers, but be very, very careful. And you must have vision before you shove waves past the river. And as above, you still want to group for objectives like Dragon and Rift Herald. Now, what do you do if you got like destroyed by your laner? Or if you're down a couple kills on them? Well, in this case, you're just going to be wanting to farm under tower. And the furthest you can push up is to the river and no farther. If you have no vision in your own jungle, then it is risky to even shove waves past your turret. Because your opponent could be in your own jungle and ambush you 
while you are mindlessly pushing waves. I know this because it has happened to me all the time and it still does. So same rule still applies here, which is to group four objectives. However, there's one thing. It might be more beneficial for you to not even group for objectives if your laner is grouping for them. Instead, tell your team to back off the objective and continue getting gold and experience. Essentially, you are trading the objective for gold and experience, which can be beneficial if your team is behind. If your team is ahead, but you are behind, then you want to probably group for objectives because even though you are not stronger than your laner, as a team you guys are stronger together. So grouping would be beneficial, and it would benefit you more than just getting XP and gold from the side lanes. Now this is the very broad macro to play in Darius outside of laning phase. You can go really in depth when talking about macro. However, I just wanted to cover the basics, and this is what I do on Darius. Last, in team fights, you want to either get five stacks on your passive as fast as you can, or use your ult on a low health enemy so you can instantly gain your passive of Noxian Might. Now mainly, you want to be prioritizing their damage threats. So ADCs and mages are your main priorities, rather than going for their tanky players. However, the enemy team knows this. Well, they should for the most part. So people like Caitlyn will be positioning away from you. So you will usually need your summoner spells, flash or ghost in team fights. Otherwise, if you don't, you will get kited and CC'd and you will not have a good time. So when you team fight, make sure you have at least one of those summoner spells. So mainly in team fights, what I do is I will try to stack their weakest member on their team or whoever's closest to me, try to stack them as fast as I can. And as soon as I get my passive and get Noxian Might, I will flash on the back line. Like I'll flash on a Caitlyn, let's say, alter, she'll die. And this is basically how you play Darius in team fights. He's pretty basic in, in this regard. And this pretty much covers the team fighting aspect for Darius. You either want to ult someone right away if, if they're low on health or get your five stacks off, whichever you can do faster. Then you want to go on their highest damage threats. So whoever that is on the enemy team, then you want to go for them. Use ghost, catch them, use flash and catch them out, whichever one works. And if you build gargoyle stone plate, you'll have a much easier time doing this. Trust me, it's a great item. I love it personally. If you enjoyed this video, if it helped you, please give it a like. Consider subscribing to the channel. If you have any questions, leave them down below and I will get back to you. This is Sapphire and I'll see you in the next one.